who's also in the film An Officer and a Gentleman and is really a very talented actress. Please welcome Lisa Eilbacher. How are you? I'm great. Thank you very I'm much great. for showing up. I know. I heard you ragged on me because I didn't last time. Well, I, I wasn't going to bring it up, but really there was a... You, to explain what happened from your side, and we'll okay, see if it... Okay, this is uh, my side of the story. You were supposed I, to be here, what, six months ago, three months ago? No, not six months ago, like two months ago. Okay. I'm two months late, but there's a good reason. See, I came in... <laughs> I, think, I think everyone's heart skipped a beat then. Okay, no, okay, no, wait. See, I came in to do AM... No, Good Morning America, mm -hmm. right? And that's... The other network, the one that begins with A. Mm -hmm. Oh, anyway, boost, hiss. Okay, so they were like footing the bill. They were putting me up they in the hotel. Sure, they were giving me, you know, all the money. Mm -hmm. So and then I get a call and they say you're going to do David Letterman, and I said great. And then then. Are you sure you said great? <laughs> I'm not telling. Anyway, no, I did say great, and I thought I was going to do this, but then there's this like rule that you can't be on Good Morning America, and David Letterman. Where is that rule? Wait, wait. This is a Good Morning America, the other network with the A rule, right? Uh -huh. So they said, you can't do that. I said, oh, well, then what do I do? And they said, well, you just do Good Morning America. Then you called, or your people called, and said, could you wait till no, Monday? No, it was me. It was me, not my people. <laughs> iPhone. Well, he, he, he sent the cutest telegram. It was so cute, he goes, I'll give you a half hour, a whole half hour. Oh, I think it was my people then. <laughs> I think... So, so anyway, so anyway. But you can do both. Uh, we no, don't have a problem with it. You don't, but they do. Well... But you know, they're in third place. Maybe that's why. Uh, I can't really say anything about that because I, I hear, I don't know this to be true, but okay. I hear that David Hartman called us all wimps. Did he? Yeah. Ooh, yes, boo hiss, boo hiss. So, uh, so I, just, I really I can't, wanted I have to come. To I really did want to go there. The important thing is that you're here now. Yeah. We've got all this ugliness behind us. Okay. And uh, but did you rag on me? I heard you did rag. Yeah, on we me. were gonna we were gonna put you in the dead. Something club. like a certain young lady in a certain major hit movie with a certain black star. Yeah. Something like that. That's whatever. right. We we were gonna yeah. yeah. But yes, see, we were was... upset because we were all looking forward to seeing you here. Oh. And then when we, and we heard that you were going to Europe. And then I we, did. Wait, that's the truth. Wait a second. I had an interview. I had to go to Europe. I went. I got back Monday night, and then you saw me on Johnny Carson. Yeah, the whole thing uh, kind of smelled. <laughs> but you have to understand, I was like a replacement because Eileen Brennan wanted to do your show, so she like ragged on them. Good Lord! Now uh, that's the truth. She wouldn't do Carson because she'd rather do Letterman. So I came in. Our flight, and he'll talk yeah. to me. You like to talk a lot to strangers I, when yeah, you go out five to pass the. Yeah, I know. I yeah, know. I want to talk. See, you know what he's up to. He sat there the whole flight. He didn't say two words to me. He didn't even eat. And then I was looking at what he was reading. He's like this, really intent. I thought, well, he must be reading like business or something. Mm -hmm. He was reading the plane charts, how the plane flies. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. So I said to him, You mean that, that little plastic thing yeah, in the seat back? In the seat back, that magazine with the little charts of where you go. Studying it for five and a half five hours? Five and a half hours. I finally said to him, like, in about five hours, I said, Did you forget to bring something to read? <laughs> and he said, No, but I'm done with this. I said, Well, tell you what, I have I had a bunch of scripts with me. I said, You want to read a script because it's my job to read this tonight, and I'm not going to read it because I'm, I've got this fabulous book that I was reading. And uh, what you was the read book? it. Tell me the book Shattered Night. Shattered Night. Wonderful. It's about a lady who shot her husband, but that doesn't make it wonderful. I mean, it was like, <laughs> well... Is it a piece of fiction? No, it's, see, I love nonfiction. This yeah. is nonfiction. It's a true story. A lady was battered uh, for years and years and years, and she finally shot her husband. Oh, I know about this. In Texas. Took yes, place in Texas. the Texas, yeah. the Houston socialite. Mrs. Yeah. Sandiford. Yeah. Well, Mrs. Sandiford shot her husband and got off. And she's here tonight. Come on out, honey. <laughs> Okay, back to the story. We gave him the script. He hated it. Hated the script. He hated it. He 
said after he read 30 pages that it would take him longer to read this than it took to write. <laughs> so, Did you ever find out what line of work the man was in? Well, kind of. Uh, he was going to Arabia, which we have something in common. I was born in Arabia. So we chit-chatted about Arabia a little how, bit. How is it you uh, were born in Arabia? My father worked for Aramco. Oh, big-time oil stuff. W well, not really big time. I mean, like... Working man time. Oh, I see. Yeah, working man time. And uh, we chatted about that a bit, but I don't remember that much about it. And he was going, and I mean, he thought I knew, like, all the hot hotels to stay at. I mean, I hadn't been there in a while. Are there hot hotels in Arabia? Very hot, like 120 <laughs> degrees. <laughs> all right. Uh, we got to do what? We have to do a commercial here, oh, okay. but uh, stay right there. Plane lands, you get in, you're at the this airport. This is terrible. You want to hear that? First of all, I'm not, I'm not real familiar with New York. So I get off the plane, and you expect to see, like, um, a sign. They said there'd be a driver there that says your name on there. So I get off, and I'm looking at all the names, and there are all these names that I don't know, and I'm thinking, oh, God, please, somebody be here to pick me up, because they forgot to tell me what hotel to go to. Mm -hmm. So I'm walking around, and it's like 20 minutes. The plane's been off for 20 minutes. Everyone's, like, getting their luggage. And I decide, well... You know, limo drivers know who has the big accounts. So I figured I'll go up to a limo driver and I'll say to him, you know, who has the big Letterman account? And they'll say, oh, they do, or so-and-so mm -hmm. does. So I stood up and I see a sign that says, late night on it. Well, I thought that was like a junket to, to Vegas, late night. I mean, I'd never seen this show before. It was the first time I saw... I did my homework. I saw the You've show. You've never last seen night. the show before. It's past my You know, bedtime. we've been on the air three and a half years, slaving twenty-four hours a day. But you now, know what? Uh, what I, are you watching? The CBS late movie? Is I that what you're no. watching? I don't have a Nielsen box, so it doesn't matter. That's not the important thing. We're not here for the purpose of ratings. We're here to entertain <laughs> America. I, I saw the show last night because I felt so dumb, you know, late night. I, late night, like I figured they were picking up like the late night people, you know. I, so, well, so I went up to the guy with the late night scene, little sign and I uh -huh. said, could you drive me? I'm kind of late night, you know. Could you drive me? Could you take me? It's late, you know. Uh -huh. And he said, you're not Lisa, are you? And I said, well, yeah. He said, oh, God, I was told to look for a good-looking blonde, but I saw you walk by, and I figured, eh, you know. See? I said, oh, great. Well, we both made mistakes. I said, now can you get me to the hotel? Yeah, yeah. So, so it, I, all, I it all worked out well. Well, they didn't have a reservation for me at the hotel. Yeah, that's a little trick we play on people who haven't seen the show. <laughs> um, now, you and I are, uh, lived in the same state. I'm from, yeah. I was born and uh, reared in Indiana. You, now, you weren't born there. Uh, no, where my were you father born? was born uh, close there. I went to Notre Dame. I was born in Arabia. Oh, your, your dad was w yeah. born near uh, uh, South Bend? Well, he went to school in South yeah. Bend. He spent most of his life growing up there. He was actually born in Coffeyville, Kansas. Coffeyville, Kansas. But I, I went to um, Fort Wayne because I had a... Well, let's just say I was rambunctious as a kid. Oh, you were uh, kind of a, a handful? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, I was a handful. You're still kind of a handful. Um, <laughs> I was a handful. Um, but anyway, I went there. What, how old were you when, when they sent you to Fort Wayne? Did they send you to Fort Wayne? Well, I was young. I was like 16. Mm -hmm. And I was a handful. And my parents said, well, you have to go and you have to learn what it's like to go to that area. Cause I was they were going to straighten you up. Well, I was going to Beverly Hills High. You don't learn that oh, much yeah. there, you know? So yeah, that might be High. trouble. Yeah. yeah, Beverly Hills High, you know, it's... Were you in serious trouble or just kind of a goof off? Quote, I was hanging out with the wrong element. Yeah. That's what my dad said. Yeah. The wrong, you can meet the wrong element anywhere, he said, but less likely in Fort Wayne. Mm -hmm. So I went to Fort Wayne, Indiana, and I said to my uncle, who I was living with, I said, please don't make me go to a school with uniforms. Please. You know, we have free dress code at Beverly High. You know, we could show up whenever we wanted. Or in ever, whatever mm -hmm. we want. So he said, oh, don't worry, I promise. You know, if that's the only thing you want, I promise. So we go to this school called Bishop Dwenger. Oh, yeah, I right? know that. Sure, Bishop Dwenger. Do you know Bishop Dwenger? Well, I know about it because in, uh, in Muncie, we used to hear uh, Fort Wayne Radio, and whenever the school's closings were announced, Bishop Dwenger was always closed. <laughs> well, when they, I went, always say, it Don't was worry open. about your uniforms, it's closed again. No, I went there, and I said to my uncle, you know, he promised me that there'd be no uniforms, so I walk in to go register, mm -hmm. and I see all these people in uniforms. And I said... You know, 
Uncle Lee, what, what's with all these uniforms? He said to me, oh, that's the band. <laughs> I said, oh, okay. Well, I became a member of the band real fast because I had to wear that uniform. Yeah. Then there was a nun. Did you have this? Did you go to Catholic school? No, I didn't. Nun stands there. You walk in the morning. She goes. <laughs> really? I swear on my life this is true. I'd walk by her and she'd be like this and she was like six foot tall. And it was to check to see if you had like the whole uniform on. Well, because I grew up in Beverly Hills, it was like a big thing with fashion in high yeah. school. Now, do you feel that th this experience at Fort Wayne benefited you? Do you feel uh, like a better person for having been there? I think I taught my dad a lesson. I really did. He, he decided I, I'd been acting since I was six. Uh -huh. He decided I needed to work in a normal job. Yeah. So he made me work at Taco Bell on State Street. <laughs> no, he did, I swear to God. And, um... I clean bean vats. <laughs> it's true. This is so true. So, I didn't get along with the other girls because at that time, this is so strange, but my picture was on Seventeen magazine. While you're attending... Uh... While I'm cleaning bean vats. Yeah. So the other girls didn't like me very much because yeah. they thought I was in there and I didn't really, you know, need the job. But I needed the job because my dad said if I worked great at Taco mm -hmm. Bell, I could come home. Mm -hmm. So, I needed the job. So I cleaned the bean vats because that was like the worst job in the whole place. Any, any tips for people at home with those hard to clean bean no, vats? No, you also know? Well, let me tell you, get some great looking guy that works at Taco Bell to lift them. They now were these like are just hot. giant cauldrons oh, that oh, no. they uh, heat they're the beans like in. They're like this big yeah. and they're like this thick and mm -hmm. I mean they weigh like a ton. Have you ever seen beans that dry and stick to a pot? I mean have you ever like made beans? Sure. They don't come off. Well, this is, these are refried beans. So you're standing there, I'm not kidding you like this, with this brush. Mm -hmm. Getting these beans off. Yeah. And then my job after I cleaned all the beans. You're bats, lucky to be alive. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> but it's true. It's true. Also at Taco Bell, if you eat anything, which blew me away because I love, I to this day love Taco Bell food. I do. Uh, you have to write down what you eat. A guy would have like a little cup of free free mm -hmm. He had to write it down. Fifty cents. Please ate free holes. What's wrong with that? I just thought that was like a major ripoff. I mean, I could tell the customers if it was good or not if I ate it. Right. So, but I had to pay to eat it. Well, that's all right. You got, I mean, if you went out to eat, you'd have to pay for your lunch there, wouldn't you? Well, but I didn't get a lunch break. What do you want? Like you got to clean the bean vats? Come <laughs> on. Uh, let me see what you're up to here. We got this officer and a gentleman, and do we have, uh, we have no clips? This woman brought no uh, clips. No clips, because they've all Upcoming been films? Uh, what, uh, what's you want to hear this? No. I'm in a good mood tonight, right, guys? I'm in a pretty good mood tonight. I want you to right, know... Right, guys. <laughs> I want you to know that an hour ago, my agent called, he's such a fan of mine, to tell me I lost the biggest film in life. And I said, but geez, I have to be funny in an hour. He said, that's okay, it's just life, you know you. Mm -hmm. I tested for this movie, I didn't get it. What was the movie? Short Circuit. I'm going to tell everyone, I did not get Short Circuit. I'm so Now, different. how do we know that this is going to be a big film? What's it about? What is Short Circuit it's about? It's such a good movie. It's about a girl and a robot. <laughs> It's going to be a huge movie. It will, I'm not kidding you. Wait a minute. The girl falls in love with the robot, and at the end, he has to go back to outer space. But he's not an alien. He's a robot. He got oh. made here. Oh. <laughs> uh, there'll be other films. I know. So don't, I don't have another about. one. I have another one. Who, who got the part? Do you know who got the part? Ali Sheedy. Ali Sheedy. <laughs> you it, are disgusting. It won't make a dime, this film. Isn't Mark my sweet? words. It won't make a dime. I know, but you know the producers of this film, the one I just lost, called me to do their other film? Mm -hmm. I, don't, I can't figure that out. What's the other film? Well, this is like, I haven't read it. Uh, oh, yeah, we'll do that one. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we, gotta, we gotta go. Look at this man. Look at over there. Like he's, he's cleaning going... a bean vat. Look at that. <laughs> okay, uh, well, good luck to you, Lisa. Thanks. But I I, don't be too upset about that film. It's just another robot movie. We've had enough robot movies. I, but this was such a good movie. Really? I'm not upset. I'm, I'm going to do another film. A robot movie was a big deal? Well, it was we like gotta a go. major I'm sorry. deal. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's my fault. We gotta, we'll, we'll be right back. Thanks, Lisa. <laughs>